When you're driving, do you look for streets or landmarks? I feel like the street is just way more precise, but but that's harder because then you have to look for street names, and that's yeah, not like it's easy harder sometimes. to see. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like sometimes landmarks, it's like, all right, did they mean turn before or after the landmark? Is there two on this street? You know, so I mean. I don't take directions like that anymore, Emily. <laughs> See, if I, someone's like, oh, I know how to get there. You do this, this, and that. As soon as they start talking, I immediately shut them out because I know I'm just going to use Google Maps. Yeah, it's fair. The internet has sort of destroyed <laughs> yeah. this debate. But <laughs> do, I mean, do you have a preference? Uh, yeah, my preference is I want an address to put in my mm-hmm. phone. <laughs> Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Emily Moyers and Kyle Imperator take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Everybody, welcome to Butter No Parsnips. <laughs> I'm Kyle Imperator. <laughs> and I'm Emily Moyers. And I'm really itching for a word today. I need it, Emily. I need it. Can you hear me itching? No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a word. Nice. Kyle, your word today is mm-hmm. men here. M E N H I R, men here. Pause for Kyle's joke. (laughs) Uh, I mean, that's what they say at a... Oh, God. What's a place where men would be? (laughs) Um, I don't know. Uh, Bathhouse? Where where do men congregate? (laughs) So funny, Kyle. (laughs) <laughs> Kyle, Kyle was like, "Where do men congregate?" And I, I mean specifically nude men. <laughs> wow, I, whew, I, I've never heard of this word. What a relief! That's the conceit I, of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I've never seen any. I mean, men here sounds like some sort of like men here the barbarian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like an ancient <laughs> wizard men <Yeah>. here. <laughs> I I mean, can I ask for the uh, language of origin? I you can. I've got some guesses in my head. I, I'm thinking somewhere in Hebrew or Arabic or something like that. Oh, that is a valid guess, but it's very wrong. Oh, wow. We English likely borrowed it from French or one of the Britonic Celtic languages. Is that like Scots or no? Gaelic? It is not. It is oh, not. We'll okay. talk about it. Is this a noun? It is. Uh, does amen it amen here? Amen here. Is it? Does it describe a person? No, it's just a thing. A thing and it's a physical thing. It's not a, a a concept. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna have to take a wild stab at it. I, I think, think you're gonna. I think a men here is. Oh, I have a clue. I forgot that's a oh, thing I can offer yeah. you. Yeah. Give me the clue. Your clue is marker. Marker. A men here, I want to say, is um like uh just uh. Kyle, the clock is running out. <laughs> <laughs> a men here is a push pin you put into a map, but like for like military battles. Oh, I like that guess. It is what I meant by marker, so you're in the right zone, but it's not what it means. Okay. Let, let me know what it is. I'll let you know. A men here is a standing stone. It is a tall, upright, rough stone erected by humans. Oh. Yeah, a standing stone. I don't think I've ever heard of this. It, this is different than those piles of stones. That has, that has a name, right? That has a name. You're right. And it's not men here. Are we going to talk about that today? We will talk about it today. We're going to talk all about rocks today. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) This is an episode for you geologists out there. That's right. All you geologists, are you archaeologists, all you neologists. Uh, Oh, and all you 
Rolling Stones-ologists. <laughs> yeah. Very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so men here, as I said, English probably borrowed it from the French menier, spelled the same, means the same. But it is possible that English actually borrowed it directly from the same language that French borrowed it from, which is Breton. B-R-E-T-O-N. Oh, is Breton like people who lived in England prior to the Roman invasion? Yes, and and I believe prior to the Germanic invasion. Oh. The Britons, B-R-I-T-O-N, were like the people that originally inhabited the British Isles. These were Celtic tribes, basically like the Celtic tribes are divided into the continental Celtic tribes, all of which are now extinct, and then the insular Celtic tribes, which were the ones that inhabited the British Isles. Wow, I it's hard to fathom there being Celtic tribes on the continent. Yes, well, it's hard to fathom that because the Romans wiped them all out. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Smeared them into the earth. <laughs> Truly. Yeah, how many Gauls have you met? They're all gone. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Of the Celtic languages spoken in the British Isles, they are generally split up into the Gaelic languages, which uh, includes the two Celtic languages that I'll bet you can guess, Kyle. Scots and Gaelic? Irish and Scottish Gaelic, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And also Manx, which is the language spoken on the Isle of Man. Oh, sure. The Gaelic languages and the Britonic languages, which are Breton, Cornish, and Welsh. Oh, where does English come from if it's not <laughs> one of those two? <laughs> well, English is like a blend of more Germanic languages. Sure, right. So the, the Britonic languages were the tribes that were in like the southwest of England. And then the Bretons were the Celtic people who migrated from southwest England to the region of France, now known as Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. And they brought their Celtic language with them, which is why we have this French word, menhir, that does not look very French at all. It doesn't at all. Yeah. We so rarely cover Celtic words uh, yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit later. There's not a ton of Britonic Celtic words that made their way into English. It's mostly like Gaelic Celtic words, I guess, because they've had a, a more like widespread and lasting presence. Irish and Scottish have at least. Manx actually was a dead language that has since been revived, which is very cool. That is fun. Yeah. But languages like Breton and Cornish are a lot more like insular. Do Are, are Breton and Cornish both still spoken? Yes. All six of these languages are still spoken. Wow. Um, yeah. It's only the continental Celtic languages that died. Speak to me in one of those languages, Emily. I can't. They died. <laughs> Not the dead ones, the living ones. Oh, <laughs> well, I can't because I, well, actually, I can because the Breton that men here comes from is actually two words, sometimes two separate words, sometimes hyphenated. Main here, main, M A E N, meaning stone from a Proto Indo European root that means big or great. And here, H-I-R, meaning long, from a Proto-Indo-European root, meaning long. I, a long stone. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what these look like, but based on your description, spot on. They got it. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. and actually, long stone is another word in English sometimes used for men here. Oh, yeah. long stone. That one, more rare, but yeah. yeah. And there are words... Basically identical to main here in other Britonic languages, Cornish and Welsh. And there are some scholars who believe that the French and English actually got men here through Cornish rather than through Breton. It, it's all very muddled and hard to differentiate. Yeah, I mean, I don't honestly know who I trust most in this debate. <laughs> so I'm just going to believe whatever the last thing I'm told is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but... Predictably, English scholars later came up with a Greek-derived equivalent for men of here, course. Of course. because how can we possibly sound smart if we don't sound like Vitruvius? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that Greek-derived equivalent is orthostat. No. Yep. <laughs> what? Uh, any thoughts on uh, breaking that word down for us, Kyle? Um, I mean, uh well, <laughs> now I'm trying to know what ortho and dentist means. I mean, ortho, is that like, I don't know, like fixing or like correcting or... 
Sort of. Straightening? Straightening? Uh, yes, straight? Kyle, you got it. Ortho means straight or upright. And stat Greek. means now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, statos means standing or stationary. Oh, so fixed upright, I guess. Yeah. So orthostat is another word you sometimes see for these standing stones. Not often. That's a bad, like. Yeah, it's a bad. That's not a good word. Like, that's it's like not a good name. As fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a good name for, I don't know, maybe a one off character in D&D. But. <laughs> An evil wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, orthostat. But let's talk about men here, because that's a more fun word. It is fun. Tell me about it. So basically, as I said at the top, a men here is a tall stone that somebody placed upright in the ground. Yeah, is it like sticking like out of the ground? Yeah, and they're the old, very, very old. The vast majority of these men here are prehistoric. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and they have been found all across Africa, Asia, and Europe, um, but a lot of them are concentrated in Western Europe, specifically the British Isles and Brittany, France. And they vary in size. Some are just like a couple feet high, and some are upwards of 30 feet, which is huge. I mean, that's just a tower. But like big, too. You know, some of like some of them are narrow, but some are like just a big b- boulder, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. The largest men here that still exists, although it's no longer standing upright, is the Great Broken Men here in France. And it once stood approximately 68 feet tall. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's insane. And it is one of the heaviest things that humanity moved without machinery. It's, wow. I think, like thousands of tons heavy. Wow, because, yeah, it would have been one piece, right? Originally, yes. It is like now like fallen over and broken because a lot of men here were actually destroyed or defaced by Middle Ages Christians because they were like, destroy all pagan things. <laughs> I think they were just jealous that they didn't get the Guinness World Record for heaviest thing moved. That's fair. <laughs> you know, it is impre- like prehistoric people <laughs> moved something that was 68 feet tall and hundred, like thousands of tons heavy by hand. <laughs> you think that it was just like a mosh pit? They all just handed it off to each other. It was just a million <laughs> people. <laughs> Is that like light as a feather, stiff as a board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, men here's are generally sort of rough, natural looking stones. I did see some that were like manually narrowed into sort of more like an obelisk shape or like squared off. But most of them are just like a rock <laughs> that happens to be taller than it is wide. <laughs> I mean, good enough. You know, those are cool. They are very cool. You should look up pictures of men here, everybody. They're cool looking. And some of them do also have like images or patterns carved into them, like just on the in the surface, like all the way up. Some of them, some of them have like specific depictions that like anthropomorphize them or have depictions of like axes or, you know, very basic like symbols like that. Or some of them are just like patterns, like swirlies. I feel like I've seen these. You probably have video games well if you play skyrim there's all the standing stones they're oh yeah of yeah. course that's a, are literally like a men here isn't it yeah it is oh that's fun so kyle a men here is a type of megalith do you know <gasps> what a megalith is uh i mean uh, you could probably a, guess. A giant stone. <laughs> you got it. It's a big rock. <laughs> uh, yeah, essentially, a megalith is uh, a prehistoric structure made out of giant rocks. Can you think of any examples? Oh, uh, well, Stonehenge, does that count? You got it, buddy. <laughs> is that the megalith? <laughs> that is a prime example because it actually demonstrates a few different types of like megalithic structures and terms that I can talk about right now. So you segued me perfectly. Love it. So some of the stones in Stonehenge are just like individual upright stones. And those would be men here's. Some of them are like trios of two upright stones and a third laid across the top. And that is called a trilithon from the Greek tri and meaning three and lithos meaning stone, three stones. 
And there is a similar but slightly different megalithic structure called a dolmen, D-O-L-M-E-N, which is also two uprights and a capstone on top, but it's sort of shaped and arranged that it forms a cavern underneath. Oh, that's what I was picturing with the triathlon. What was it? <laughs> so look up a Stonehenge trilithon. It's it's more just like two pillars and a stone on top. You know, like a dolmen almost makes a little cave, but a trilithon is literally just two posts and a thing on top. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah. So dolmens could also sometimes became like tombs or or graves because there was like sure. a, a cavity. Uh, this is going to be really helpful when I do a deep dive into the architecture of the Flintstones universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to be throwing around the right, like, jargon. Yeah. <laughs> these are things you should know. When I become a realtor in bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> realtor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I'll give you another one, Kyle. So the full formation of Stonehenge, you would call a stone circle, otherwise known as a cromlech. <gasps> a cromlech! <laughs> C-R-O-M-L-E-C-H. Oh, a, cr- a cromlech. A cromlech. That was almost my word that I started with at the top because it's a really good one. <laughs> it's so good. That sounds like, why are there so many D&D wizards in this episode? Because they're all it's like cromlech. Welsh. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Dolmen and cromlech also derived from the Britonic Celtic languages. Sure. What are the parts of cromlech? It is from crom, meaning crooked, and lech, meaning stone. Wow, a crooked stone. Oh, or curved. It's like a curve of stones because sure, it's a stone sure, circle. Sure, 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 because it's a circle. That makes a lot of sense. Cromlech. It sounds like all-knowing, like some sort of <laughs> god, you know, cromlech. Behold the cromlech. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There are other kinds of megalithic structures as well. Uh, there's a cairn. A cairn! Oh, yeah. C-A-I-R-N yes. is like a stack or a pile of stones yes, that, yes, 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 that yes. humans made on purpose. Those are also in Skyrim, but not the way that we know them. What? Right? Because aren't cairns the tombs in Skyrim? Oh, sure. Well, a cairn can also be like basically the entrance to under a, a, a hill. Yeah, you know? yeah, Like yeah, you yeah, pile yeah. up stones on the side to kind of hold the wall of the hill. And then there's an entrance. I think that oh. that as a whole is called a passage grave, which is another megalithic structure. Fun. There's also a cyst or a cyst vein that yeah. are basically like underground tombs lined with giant stones. How is cyst spelled? C-I-S-T. Still gross sounding. <laughs> yeah, so those are all megaliths, but a men here is also a type of monolith. Because it's a one a stone. That's right. Yeah, a monolith is essentially a singular, very, very massive rock. <laughs> like obelisks. Sure, yes. But so or... monoliths can include just natural, you know, geological stones, even oh. like part of a mountain range or something. As long as it is a singular rock, it is a monolith. So there's one in Yosemite called El Capitan. The Rock sure. of Gibraltar is a monolith. <laughs> yeah. D- does it have to be giant? Like, does it also have to be megalithic to be a monolith? I guess not. But something like the Great Sphinx of Giza is a monolith because it was carved out of an existing hunk of limestone. What? I thought yeah. it was... What? That's crazy. No. The Great Sphinx of Giza is a monolith that was carved. Yeah. That makes it so much more impressive, and it didn't <laughs> need to be any more impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. So that would be like a quarried monolith, because they basically just right. took a rock that was already there and started cutting into it. There are yeah. also like moved monoliths. So there's something called the Thunderstone in St. Petersburg, Russia. That is also one of the heaviest things that humans have moved, although it was in the 1700s. So they had the benefit of a metal sled on a track. But that was like a big giant rock that humans moved to somewhere else to put it on display. 
and also like things that we've carved into shapes like the Sphinx or like the Moai, also known as the Easter Island statues. I was going to bring them up. They're cool because we found out they have bodies. (laughs) Yes, we found out they have bodies that were buried. Also, they may not have originally been just one stone because there's evidence to suggest that they once had coral eyes in the eye sockets, (gasps) as well as a sort of hat-like top knot made out of volcanic rock that was placed on top. so fun. Everybody go Google Easter Island statues with eyes because it completely changes your perception of the whole thing. (laughs) It's like when they started painting those Greek statues. It's like, this is now different (laughs) fundamentally. I don't like it. (laughs) It gives them a different character. They're immediately less aloof, you know? Yes, because like the Moai without eyes are like... I am indifferent to time and I will protect this land until the end of days. And the Moai with eyes are like, hey, everybody. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Oh, my God, Emily, I'm looking at it now. It looks more like I haven't slept in three weeks. (laughs) Put me out of my misery. (laughs) It's truly horrifying. Everybody go look him up. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, listen, it's prehistoric. It's from a long, long while ago. Long, long, long time. And now, Kyle, just to round us out here, you might be wondering to yourself why these men here's and megaliths and monoliths were made. Uh, yeah, I definitely am now. I always thought it was just for the heck of it. I mean, I, well, it could have been because the general okay. answer to why the men here's were erected is we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Um, yeah, it has been like a subject of hot debate amongst the scholarly community. You know, at the top of the episode, I sort of intimated that they were landmarks of some kind. And that is one possibility that they were like territorial markers. Another is that they were some sort of like visual memory aid to remember important events or stories. Another is that they functioned as early calendars, which is crazy. Oh, Stonehenge, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. The, the Moai, it, less so. Well, but. the Moai is a separate thing. Yeah. I'm talking about like the men here specifically, oh, gotcha, like just gotcha. the, the stones. Yeah, I think the idea is it was basically like a sundial, but that tracks the sun's movement through the year rather than through the day. Sure. And then, of course, a big theory is that they had some sort of religious or ceremonial or ritual purpose. Right. It's where the aliens landed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's where the aliens yeah and i have i mean i've talked to people in the history field who are like you know historians tend to fall back on the ritual purpose when they don't have any evidence for any other purpose (laughs) so i the point is that we don't know we truly do not it's crazy how many of these men here's are in like western europe specifically there's speculations that there was like a specific like culture of people that had some sort of strong emphasis on these men here's and megaliths and but we just don't know a lot about them it was just one culture going around making all of them well the thing is a lot of the men here's are on like coasts and islands and peninsulas so if they traveled oh. by sea there's like Oh, reason to think that maybe. Yeah. Then it literally is. They're like, all right, we were here already. (laughs) Here's our big rock. They're breadcrumbs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We know if we pass by this, we made a wrong turn. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but we we just do not know a lot about who those people might have been. I think that makes the whole situation so much cooler, Emily. Well, since it's so cool, Kyle. Oh, wait, sorry. I have one more cool explanation. Okay. for why the men here's might be there because there is a legend that the men here's are actually roman soldiers who invaded britain and were turned to stone by druids so like that's the theory that i subscribe to <laughs> uh yeah it definitely sounds the most plausible of all the yeah, theories well, that and you've you stated today. that you were going to believe whatever the last thing you heard was so <laughs> I I think you have to believe that one now. I am contractually bound (laughs) to believing this now. So that's right. Thank you for making that statement, Kyle. Can you make another statement that uses men here in a sentence? I would love to. Emily, (laughs) I'm going to say uh, oftentimes... Films will rely too heavily on some sort of supernatural occurrence happening around a men here as a way to further a plot or a story 
or a sequel perhaps. <laughs> and uh-huh. this is how you know that film has jumped the shark. Very true, Kyle. Very true statement. And often undercuts the work of early humans, you know? Yeah, that's that's what those films are doing. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, you know, if you say that the pyramids were built by aliens, it sort of ignores the fact that the pyramids were built by slaves that worked uh-huh. themselves to death. That is actually a very good point. Salient. And that's what I want to end this episode on. That's what I really want you to understand about men here's. <laughs> Emily is a monolith and a megalith amongst <gasps> people who are defending the people who built <laughs> monoliths and megaliths. Well, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> it's true. Can we play a game now? Uh, can we? We can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, today the game is called I See Where You're Going. Ah, that's pretty good, (laughs) Emily. I don't know that it is. I haven't explained the joke yet. (laughs) Ah, I see where you're going. (laughs) (laughs) So, Kyle, as I said earlier, we don't get a ton of words from the Britonic languages, but there are a few common words that do come from mostly Welsh. So for this game, I'm going to give you some Britonic words And I want you to tell me the English... I want you to tell me where they're going. I want you to tell me the English words that they turned into. Okay. I got it. I don't know how successful I'll I'll be, but I'll try. Well, luckily, I just have a few. So we'll just zip zaps up right through it. Perfect. (laughs) All right, Kyle, ready? Yes. This mode of transportation borrowed its name from the Welsh Korug, C-O-R-W-G, because Welsh is criminal. I mean, is it just car? No, it's Cart. old. It's older than cars, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a mode of aquatic transportation, if that helps. Oh, and I don't know if you'll help. know this English word, if that helps. <laughs> I, I, mercy, uncle. <laughs> Do you know what a coracle is, Kyle? No, I don't. It's a kind of boat. It's like a it's like a boat that looks like a turtle shell. It's like just round. That's fun. Coracle? Can you spell it? C O R A C L E. Oh, I do know this only because I had to look it up because when I was looking into diesel, <laughs> a lot of them were ta- talking about being in coracles and rowing around things. Diesel. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it was like a um, a big boat in this part of the world. So that makes sense. Yeah, I really do. It's just an upside down turtle shell. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> All right, Kyle, I promise the rest of them are words you know. And also, okay. for some reason, the rest of them are animals. <laughs> All right, fine. Kyle, this creature may have borrowed its name from the Welsh Gwilan, the Cornish Gwilan, or the Breton Gwilan. And they've all got crazy spelling, so I won't even bother. Iguana. Nope. It is a flighted creature. Oh, flighted. Quail. No. No. Come on, that was supposed to be my comeback. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but it is... Well, I told you it was a bird. I, w- I can't give you this... <laughs> I can't tell you, oh, you were close, you got a bird, because I told you it was a bird. <laughs> uh, it is a gull, Kyle. A gull! Yeah. Right, I'm starting to get the how the letters changed. It's Yeah, The well, the next ones are... I'm actually not even going to tell you the Welsh because it'll be too easy to guess. They're very spot on. Okay. So, this creature derives its name from two Welsh words meaning dwarf and dog. Uh, oh, d- dachshund? Dachshund? No. Dachshund? It is an iconically British dog because we're we're in Great Britain. Um, mastiff. No. Uh, uh, bulldog. No. Seth has put a hint in the chat. <laughs> that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth, Kyle. Oh, corgi. Corgi, you got it. Yes, uh, that comes from the Welsh cor, meaning dwarf, and ki, meaning dog. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. All right, Kyle, one more. This one, I promise you'll get. You won't. 
this <laughs> You'll get it if I tell you the Welsh. This creature also derives its name from two Welsh words, meaning head and white. Is is it a bird? It is a bird. Yeah, I feel like those are the only animals other than <laughs> other than, than corgis. dogs in in like the British Isles. Like what yeah, else is there? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it a a pigeon? It is not a dove. It is not. Um. The Welsh word for head, I will tell you, is pen. Pen. And then the second half is a word meaning white. Pen. Penwit. <laughs> pen. Pen. You can get there, Penance. Kyle. I know you can. Pen. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> pen what? Pen. Penwit. Pen. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> what? Like you're. You're. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe how close you are to saying it, and it has not clicked in your head yet. So pheasant? No. <laughs> closer. You were closer with Penwit. Pen. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm gonna wait until you get there, and I don't care how much Seth has to cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, think of any bird in the world where the first syllable is pen. Penguin. <laughs> penguin. Jesus Christ. I wasn't. What penguins are there in the freaking British Isles? Kyle, it's a fantastic question, and I have a f- I have an answer to your question because that was also my question. I was like, how on earth? Could the word penguin have come from Welsh, a place yeah. where there are no penguins? The answer is that the name penguin was first given to a different bird. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then they just saw penguins and were like, those are like these birds. Literally, yes. <laughs> the great Insane. auk, A-U-K, is a bird native to the seas of Newfoundland, and they have white heads. So they call them penguin, white head. And then later, people went oh. to <laughs> when people discovered penguins, they were like, hey, that looks like that white headed bird that we got back home. We'll just call it the same. I mean, honestly, they do look like ox, like penguin, like there is a pretty close similarity there. Yeah. So that's all I've got on penguins and men here's. Those, I mean, I've learned a lot. <laughs> Not that I don't it usually took on you this longer, podcast, but you did. <laughs> yeah, I've learned a lot at the expense of my dignity. <laughs> I have you to thank for this, Emily. Great episode. Oh, thanks, buddy. And those of you at home who are wondering where to find more information about me losing my dignity. <laughs> Remember, you can find Butter No Parsnips on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Butter No Parsnips Podcast and on TikTok at Butter No Parsnips. And if you like today's episode, consider giving us a five star rating or review wherever you heard us. And if you really like today's episode, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Butter No Parsnips. Donating five dollars or more earns you a shout out either on social media or here on the podcast. Thanks so much to all of you. You help us make what we make. And with that, I've been Emily Moyers. And I've been Kyle Imperator. And this has been Butter No Parsnips. <laughs> <laughs>